Hello and welcome back to the shed. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to sharpen a carving chisel. Hope you enjoy. So today we're going to be freehand sharpening again because we're sharpening a carving chisel. You can't readily use a jig for that unless you're using something like a powered whetstone grinder or something like that. They have some jigs that can do that sort of thing. So I'm going to be following on and using very similar processes to sharpening the chisel and I'll leave a link to that video below if you haven't seen that. This gouge is a one inch gouge. Um, Obviously this process works for any gouge. The smaller gouges are going to sharpen much quicker, but they're going to have a much smaller bevel in a lot of cases, so they can be a little tricky. So let's bring you in here. So what I'm using here are King's Waterstones. Uh, so the first process I'm going to do, especially with the gouge, because you need to hold it and lock it in place as you're running on the stone like this, if you're not confident with holding that angle, we can just come in with some Sharpie here and you can color in the whole bevel or just part of the bevel. I just like to hit just the top of the bevel here and then you know when you got to that edge because really that edge is all that really matters. When you're holding it, it's like how I showed in the previous video, but let me just recap and I'll show you how to hold this so you can maintain the angle once you've found it. So to hold the carving gouge, to sharpen it freehand, what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to have our elbows locked in to our sides. Now that just prevents your arms from moving and adding discrepancies while you're moving back and forwards. So you lock that in, then you come in and I like to either put a thing, finger or a thumb here on the inside and then you rock around until you can feel that bevel. Now the best place is like right in the middle, that's the best place to actually find your angle to start with because it's just the easiest spot where you can hold it. So once you've got that held, you lock your hands and your wrist in and your finger in place and then you move from the hips. Now that's only going to get you on the flat part here. But of course this is round so we want to rock as we go. So if you come in and hold it on that angle and you come right to the far edge away from you, lock that angle there, then as you push, you just roll the wrist. The important thing is to keep pressure down on that bevel once you've found it, and to just move from the hips, so you can see the rocking motion is all on the wrist here as you move. And when you're starting close here and you're moving away, it's almost a natural progression of the movement for it to just rock as you push further away from your body. And you can see there, there's a little bit of the marker pen left back here. I don't know if you can see that, it's very light. But the sharpening has come right to the edge and you can almost feel a burr. There's a very, very fine burr on the inside. So let's go ahead and give this a good sharpen. So we'll use this first stone. And now I can definitely feel a burr on the inside. So those of you that have seen any hand sharpening or just chisel sharpening videos, you know that we have to remove that burr before we move on to the next grit. But we can't just put it down and rub it on the stone because, well, it's curved on the inside. So how do we go about doing that? So I've only seen these with wet stones and this is called a slip stone. Now, what a slipstone is, is an overlaid shape. It's like the shape of an airplane wing, wider at one end, narrow at the other. And the whole idea is that that roundness is used to get on the inside of a gouge to remove the burr. Now, they come in different sizes. This is a little small for this size chisel, but it works so you've got a larger round on one side, a narrower round on the other side, and that allows you to do a wide range of gouges. We've got to be very careful with this when we're doing this so we don't change the angle on the inside of, a ga of the gouge. But it is not as important to keep that flat as it is with just a normal bench chisel. So 
we want to keep we obviously want to keep this wet because it's a whetstone and I'll uh, bring you in and show you how I go about removing the burr using the slipstone. So with the slipstones, you obviously want to come into the inside like this and because they've got quite a reference here, you want to reference that flat on the chisel as best you can. And then kind of holding it like this and, and you can go ahead and reference it flat like this if you want. Now the other way you can do it and my preferred way is you're lifting it up like this, you're looking with your eye along here, so you can see when you've made the contact along the inside here, because you can eyeball straight down. We're going to come right out to that edge, right out to the edge closest to you, and you're going to move it up and down, right out to the outside edge, and back again. Now, Every time you do that, you can feel for the burr. I usually find that I have very, very fine burrs when I sharpen carving gouges. So in this case, that burr is almost gone, but we'll do one last pass and you can just do as many passes as you need to, to remove that burr. And I can now feel that that burr is completely gone. So then we do this same process through the other two grits, or as many grits as you've got. And then we move on to the strop. And that process is a little different as well, because we've got to deal with the inside of the gouge. Keep the stone wet. And you can reapply the Sharpie if you need to. I don't need to. Once you've got used to it, you don't really need it. So we feel for the bevel here, close to us. Lock in place. Rock. So you just want to pay pe special attention right to the corner to make sure you're actually sharpening through the full sweep of your gouge. So now I've got the burr, so let's remove it. So now we've done the main sharpening on the bevel and we've taken that burr off. Obviously, my next process is always to strop. And in this process, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways you can strop the chisel. So as you can see here, I have the strop in the vise, again, with or without honing compound. And of course, the process is a little bit different on a strop because you can only pull in one direction. You can never push towards the cutting edge. Now, with a gouge, that doesn't really happen so much. I tend to lock it like this, lock the elbows again, and you just work in this motion. And if you can see here, I'm just rocking. My feet are planted and I'm rocking at the hips here and just locking the chisel and just rocking it at the wrist like I did before. So you can do this as many times as you feel you need. Uh, 50 is the number I tend to aim for. So now that we've got that, and you can see how shiny this bevel is on the back here, I'm going to say we're pretty sharp there now. So I like to make sure there's no burr in the middle, and you can feel a very fine one. We do need to make sure there's no burr there. So what you're going to want for this is a loose piece of leather. Uh, because the burrs are small, you can use honing compound on these bits if you want. But the idea is you can get it here, and you can sort of roll it and get it to the angle you need, and then strop along it. So you fold it like so until you get the right angle. Move the chisel through it. About 10 times. And now that's sharp. So for those of you that don't have a loose piece of leather as a strop, um, I just want to show you another process. What I've got here is a scrap piece of pine. You want to a very soft wood for this or as soft as you can find and you're going to just look at radiusing a corner that you can you can use now this is a piece of construction timber 
So it's already got that radius there and we can utilize that radius on the wood. So you simply add a little bit of honing compound, whether it's liquid or in the block form. And then you just work your chisel back and forwards, back and forwards. Just making sure to keep that honing compound where you want it. And just like that, you remove your burr. I just wanted to talk about one last thing that you can buy. You can buy these specialist tools. You can get diamond ones and you can get whetstone ones like this. And this is just a whetstone with a gouge dug out of it. Carving chisel like this, uh, you can't really use these, but for the little ones, these are useful and you can just run the chisel back and forth straight in it. And you know, it's pretty quick and easy to sharpen. But if you learn how to freehand them, you don't need something like this. And I wouldn't even recommend something like this because the freehanding is just so easy and so quick. So as you can see, folks, it's pretty easy to sharpen a gouge. There's a few different ways you can go about doing it, but the process I showed you is the easiest way and the way that I recommend everyone learns. So if you'd like to see some more great sharpening videos, please check out the playlist down here. And I just want to put a big shout out there to my patrons on Patreon. Without you, I wouldn't be able to keep doing what I'm doing. And if any of you out there would like to help to support me to keep making these great videos, please consider checking me out on Patreon. Bye for now.